welcome along to another how to guide video for doing various bits and bats on your BMW E39 M5. Today we're going to be looking at oil cooling, in particular the engine oil and the power steering fluid. Out of the factory the S62 engine comes with a heat exchanger located underneath the intake in between the throttle bodies and that is a water to oil heat exchanger which helps warm the oil up to operating temperature and then is supposed to assist in keeping the oil quite cool as well but in reality it is nothing more than a pain in the ass and when you've got your car on track increases your oil temperatures no end The power steering side, due to the design of the system, doesn't hold quite enough power steering fluid that you would like in order to keep it nice and cool and therefore gets hot, expands and quite often you see around the power steering cap oil that's come out even if you've put a brand new o-ring on there. So to address the oil, engine oil, we're going to use a BMW oil filter housing with oil cooler takeoff and mount a remote oil cooler. The oil filter housing has a built in thermostat which opens at 100 degrees Celsius and therefore only uses the cooling radiator for the oil once the oil is up to temperature. The power steering side we're going to do away with the standard loop which sits between the radiator and the air conditioning system and we're going to use a gearbox cooler off a E53 X5 automatic and that will allow a relatively straightforward fitment for the power steering system. So we'll crack on and take the car in bits and you'll be able to follow the process through on a stage by stage. First thing we're going to do, we're going to remove the front bumper after getting your vehicle up on in the air. To remove the front bumper, if you want to refer to my previous video about fitting the Hamann style splitter, and then I've detailed how to remove the front bumper there. Then once you've got your front bumper off, you'll be able to get your own little trays off as well. Once you've got your front bumper off, then you'll need to remove the airbox and intake tract on the passenger side, or driver's side if you're in America. Then we'll need to remove the headlights, and once we've done that, we're going to be looking at removing some of this plastic air dam for the kidney grills, as this is where our oil cooler is going to sit. Then our radiator cooler for the power steering is going to sit down here in the air dam behind the front grille. Once we've got the front bumper off and the headlights, this then gives us access into this area and you're going to need to take the radiator off as well as we're going to be removing the standard pipe work for the power steering cooler in favour of replacing it with a transmission cooler off an E53 X5. Now this is a used part and I've flushed it out with petrol in order to remove any traces of previous fluid from the car it came off and it came out pretty gunky so I carried on doing it until it run clean and I used about about three or four litres of petrol in total just for flushing it out and cleaning it out. And this is going to be mounted down here in the air dam so it gets primary flow through the lower grill of a front bumper. To remove the standard power steering cooler pipe work very simple, simply pull off the rubber trim pieces on the plastic shroud, unbolt the securing bolt which holds the pipe work into the mounting point have a bucket or something handy underneath so you don't spill your power steering fluid all over the floor 
and then we can also remove the pipework from the power steering reservoir as that is going to be changed as well. Once you've drained the power steering system if you start at the bottom under the vehicle then you can drain it using the bottom hose which feeds the power steering pump from a reservoir to drain the reservoir initially. Then remove the connections to the cooler 30mm nut and bolt then it comes off. Make sure that when you're slacking in the bolt off it will be very tight and possibly seized due to dissimilar metal corrosion aluminium and steel that work the bolt backwards and forwards a few times until it's loosened up otherwise you'll end up shearing it off in there it's not a major issue because we're not going to be reusing this but if you do want to reuse it in the future then you've got the option pull off the pipe work remove the plastic clip from here then you'll be able to lever out the plastic pipe work and it will just unclip from where it's held on the plastic surround for the air conditioning radiator and once you've done that we no longer need this part so we can put it to one side and make sure you dispose of any oil correctly in accordance with your local authority instructions don't just pour it down the drain as that's not only illegal it's dangerous and harmful to wildlife after unpacking the transmission cooler that I bought and inspecting the mounting hardware transpired that whoever removed it from the car that it came from sheared off a bolt inside the aluminium housing and no amount of heat plus gas or an easy out would remove it so to get around this issue cut the pipes off which will allow me to slide on the hydraulic hose and then secure with jubilee clips that way instead and it will still allow me to mount within the front portion of a car as such. Once you've got the power steering cooler mounted and you've put your hydraulic hoses where you need them, use 12mm internal bar oil resistant hose doesn't need to be high pressure as this is on the low pressure side of the power, power steering system and all it's doing is returning the power steering fluid back to the tank then you can run these up onto the reservoir then the other one goes to the return from the steering rack I've double clamped these for extra security on the hose from the steering rack then where it's fitted to the cooler is a slight swage which I've created and that's going to hold the hose in as well make sure that when you're rooting your hoses that anywhere which has got an issue with sharp edges is avoided if it can't be avoided use a piece of old radiator hose split in half and wrapped around it then zip tied in place just to hold it together then if it does have to rub against any sharp edges or lean on sharp edges it's not going to cause you any issues before you refit your power steering tank if you're also fitting an oil cooler which we are going to do later on in this video replace the power steering tank mounts with three quarters of an inch or 20 mil tall M6 rubber bobbins then that will give you extra clearance for when we put the hoses to the oil filter housing for the oil cooler. Once you're happy with the fitment and location of your power steering cooler then if like mine it was a bit on the tatty side so to speak due to its age then give it a quick coat of satin black paint then that will hide its age a bit and make it blend in a bit more behind the radiator grill on the bumper also we've refitted the pipes to the power steering reservoir filled it up and manually turned the power steering pump over after removing the belt and this has primed the system ready for once the engine is restarted 
to continue filling the reservoir as it will take approximately a litre and a half more than what the standard system will do. Now we've got the radiator refitted to the car we can start putting all the plumbing system back together and make sure that there are zero leaks on your cooling system. So we can run the engine up and check that our power steering cooling system is working with zero leaks. Also today the parts for the oil cooler system have turned up. So we've got a Mokul 15 row oil cooler, two M26B 1.5 to 7 eighths GIC fittings and associated hoses in order to connect the oil filter housing with the cooler takeoff to the oil cooler. Now if you're shopping for parts yourself to do this and you're thinking I can't get hold of AN10 fittings to metric, JIC is the industrial spec version of AN fitting. It's absolutely identical except it's what the industry calls it as a standard and it's Japanese international something or other. The fittings for GIC are a damn sight cheaper obviously with them being industrial they're made of steel and more robust these are nickel plated so they won't rust unlike your AN fittings for your car which are made of alloy and if you over tighten them they can shear if you put a spanner on them they scratch and generally well, it's nice and fancy, I've not trusted them as I've seen them fail before. So if you're going down the AN fitting route, then that's entirely up to you. I'm going to stick with JIC industrial type fittings. The hose itself is proper industrial hose, rated at 400 bar. So there's going to be zero issues with burst pressures and all the fittings are swaged on using a machine die and made to my spec which will allow the routing of the oil cooler hoses from here, round here and up to the filter housing where they'll be located. Now the oil filter housing has turned up, we've fitted the M26B 1.5mm to 7 8 GIC adapters into the side of it, using doughty seals as well to prevent any oil leakage. And once you've done this, make sure that they're tightened up. 32mm socket cures that one. And then we're going to look onto the routing of our hydraulic hoses. I want mine to look like a fairly standard installation. So I'm going to attempt to route the hoses semi-invisibly under the airbox, which will mean a bit of modification to the airbox and cutting it so the hoses are underneath and out of the way. This won't have any impact on the air filtration system as it will all be before the air filter and there will still be the cold air intake down at the bottom which will run to underneath the front bumper. To mount the oil cooler we're going to need to make a cut in the kidney grill shroud at the top and at the bottom to get rid of the centre T-bar, this piece, then you're going to also need to make some recesses for your oil line fittings and drill some holes so you can mount your rubber bobbins which then secures the oil cooler to the front of the car and this allows you then to run your hydraulic lines to your oil cooler take off on the oil filter. Once you've got your new oil filter housing mounted, granted this is not um, ideal at the moment but it's for testing purposes until I can get a bracket made up. So I've just cantered it over at about 15 degrees and used one of the existing holes aside of the proper mounting points with the existing rubber bobbin and it's still sat inside its rubber housing leg on the bracket so it's fairly secure and it's perfectly adequate for testing. Decide where you're going to run your hoses and then once you've done that you'll need to modify the lower headlight plastic trim plate to allow the hoses to go through. 
So mine's going to be cut out here slightly to allow the hoses to sit in there. Then once you've done all that, you can take the hoses off, remove the cooler and prime it with fresh engine oil. It's very important that you prime it with fresh engine oil. Two reasons. Because the inlet and outlet are both at the bottom, you don't want any air getting trapped in here. Now, the cooling system for the oil should have adequate pressure in that it pushes any air out once the thermostat opens in the housing. However, if there is any air in there and you're running it on a track and that is pushed through once the thermostat opens, then that's likely to cause a slight starvation of oil in your engine and then you may be running into other issues. So we'll be taking this off, flipping it over, priming it, putting the hoses back on, priming the hoses as well before we go on to the oil filter housing and then that will ensure that this is full of fresh clean oil so when the thermostat opens there is minimal if any air at all to cause any issues once the oil system's up to temperature. The car's now back together with regards to the headlights have been replaced, the oil cool has been primed up, the pipework's been primed, the oil filter housing needs to be primed before we put the filter back in. This only takes around about a quarter of a litre of oil, 250 mils. Then that'll be primed up and we can put the filter in and then we can start the car up and check for any leaks. Now we've got the engine fired up and it's starting to run up to temperature. We can check for any leaks around the hose unions. The damper seals which I used originally were weeping slightly so these have been replaced with heavy duty copper washers. There are no leaks on the unions for the oil cooler and there are no leaks for the power steering cooling system. So allow your engine to run up to temperature and then you'll be able to observe for any leaks and make sure everything is fine. You may also be wondering why I've taken the air boxes off. Decided to fit an induction kit and that'll be coming in the next video so keep an eye out for that as we'll be running through how to fit an induction kit and a cold air feed. We'll also be doing an air temperature sensor relocation as well. So thank you for watching, I uh, hope this video is helpful. Subscribe to my channel for more videos, give this video a like any comments and questions please let me know and once again thank you for watching